What's up you guys? Welcome back to another episode and thanks for tuning in. So it is pretty late right now. I just got done with school. But I do want to start on the half size radiator install for the Integra. Now tonight, to get this process done, I'm going to be wiring up these two fans. Slim fans are going to go on the radiator and the um, AC condenser. I'm also going to be swapping out two hoses. This one goes to the head and to, I believe, the heater core inlet. That's the Deco part number. It's universal hose, cut to fit. And then I'm going to be swapping out one other hose that goes from the head to the throttle body. Um, as you guys seen in the colder intake install, that hose was kind of just slapped together using the old bracket. This is just going to make it a one-piece solid hose instead of that middle piece. Um, and for these fans, I'm actually going to be using some OEM fan connections that I got from a 99 Civic at the junkyard. And then for the flush, I'm going to be using Blue Devil Radiator Flush. I'm not really sure how good it is. So while the car cools down, I'm going to start on these fans. And then really quick, I'm going to show you how to check which direction they're supposed to be spinning and how to make sure you're going to be wiring them up the same way. One quick note is that uh, one quick note is that since these are OEM Honda uh, connections, there's blue and black. And I did get this these fans for a Integra slash Del Sol or Civic. And it's blue and black. I'm not sure if they did it on purpose. It's a DNA motoring. Um, but yeah, so let me show you how to check really quick. If you guys look right here, this is the fan on the radiator side. And there's these two connections right here. Make sure they're plugged in. And the way I'm going to be checking the way they work is I got the AC on. As you guys can see, the fan is spinning. So really quick, I'm just going to turn off power to the car and we'll watch it slow down and you can see the direction. So car's off and if you guys could see that really quick, it was spinning in this direction that way. And that is a uh, counterclockwise direction. So now I'm going to show you how to actually check if the fans you're going to be wiring up are spinning in the right direction. Okay, so really quick, if you notice the fins on this fan are angled in a direction kind of like this diagonal facing the uh, driver's side of the car not the passenger and if you hold this DNA fan they are facing the same direction uh, with a slight slant towards the driver's side of the car and what I did real quick was these two quick disconnects I literally just squished them with some pliers to make sure that they plug into this connection right here so hold on alright guys so all I did was I slid them in these two pins and the way I made sure that they're on the right way is I grabbed this connection, lined it up like if it was getting plugged in and seeing which one was left and right, so black and blue. And then on this one as well, black and blue. Gonna leave the fan resting like this and I'm gonna do the same thing of turning on the AC real quick. Okay guys, I got the key on engine off the exact same way. AC is turned on full blast. And as you can see, the fan is spinning. Now I'm a turn it off and then see if we can catch it slowing down as well there you guys go so if you seen correctly the fan was spinning in this direction same as the OEM fan so we know that it's gonna wire up just blue to black or blue to blue and black to black while the car cools down I'm gonna be wiring up these two fans and if you notice I have one longer connection one shorter one that's as much as I can reach with the Civic so what I'm gonna be doing is putting the shorter one on the passenger side fan and the longer one on the driver's side is fine and that's just because uh, what it looked like to me is the harness on the passenger side had a little bit more wiggle room and play just because there is that second connection I believe going to the lights and I can move that around and get that to reach lower if I need to and on the passenger side there's only about this much wire and I can't really move that too much so I'm hoping that this is enough to make up for that just in case it can't reach a stretch or anything I can have this work out for it. With that, I'm just gonna Cut open this little protection right here just because I'm no longer going to need it. I have heat shrink tubing and the wire conduit uh, flame retardant 3 8 sleeving that I'm going to be using and that should be more than enough protection in the engine bay. Please excuse me for this.
So you guys, it's not the best soldering job, but it's all the way through. Pretty thin and even. I'm going to give this a little bit of time to cool down. And then I'm going to shrink these tubings around it. Add this right here. I'm about to do the same thing to the next one. They're both done, and you can tell one is much longer than the other one. But like I said, this will be going on the driver's side, passenger side. And with this done, there should have been more than enough time for the car to cool down. So I'm going to go over there while I drain it. And then we'll start the flush. Alright, you guys, now this is really easy to drain. Just gotta make sure the drain drain pan is in place. Alright, and then this right here, this is on the passenger side. It's real easy. As you can see, drain's pretty simple. <clears throat> so you guys know where it's at. That's where it's draining from. It's right here, almost right above the cap. To help it drain out faster, I'm gonna empty it, open this up. Already emptied out the reservoir, so that's no big deal. And then I'm also gonna be draining out from here. Once everything is seemed to finish, there's a drain plug right there. I'm gonna be breaking open it's a 19 millimeter lower pan drains. I have this meter to cap off. I'm just putting the 19 on here. On this drain plug, I got Mr. Brakey on him. I'm just pushing off. So that's broken. And this probably will make a big mess. Pretty big mess but the drain pans under there catching most of it okay, so if you guys could see all that in there I'm not really sure what that is kind of seems like sand and maybe metal flakes stuff like that so this is why I'm gonna be doing a good flush on the system and I got this cap off so we'll be moving on to changing out those hoses next and then adding water running it and then the flush now to start off, we'll just be taking off this hose right here. This is the hose that goes to the heater core. I'm sure you guys could see, but it's all taped up, messed up. It was about to pop, so I just wanted something that's like a quick fix. And this next hose, I don't mind it just because all the coolant's going to be emptied out anyways. I'm going to take off this upper radiator hose. Probably some coolant's gonna spill out. Okay, I'm um, not, that's pretty awesome. I'm just taking off this one to make sure there's space. And now it's gonna be this bottom hose. Let me get some better pliers. And this one. This hose right here goes to the bottom right there runs around and connects to if you guys have a OEM intake tube this piping right there it goes to this piping that normally collects the valve cover to the intake and then it goes on the throttle body right there on a manual transmission vehicle so I'll be replacing this hose and then this one right here that I took off goes to the heater core inlet so I'm going to be flushing that out right now. 
So hang tight. Now this is the hose I was talking about. It goes sitting like this. This part goes to the throttle body. This part goes to the head. I'm going to be swapping that out real quick. Okay guys, and just for simplicity of being able to reach, I'm going to be using these temporarily until I can find a better setup. But, you're running this hose under and behind everything, under and behind everything, just to kind of hide it a little bit. I know it's not the best, it could probably be better, but just to work with what I have right now. Razor, cut this. Okay guys, so if you notice, I did get new clamps. I'm not using those blue butterflies. I did have some that fit regularly. But I'm about to show you guys really quick how I'm going to be flushing this system. And now that everything's been opened up, I'm just going to be using my garden hose. And the first thing I'm going to do is I have the cap back on the radiator. I'm sticking it in the top of it. I'm just letting it go. I'm trying to keep as much pressure in as I can. Yeah, some of it's going to fly out like that, but since the drain cock is still open, it's going to be empty. And then the next part I'm going into is this opening on the block. So I'm going to be doing the same thing, and you'll see it come out through this hose right here and this one right there. Once it builds up some pressure, there's some steam coming out. It's a little bit hot. And bam. There's no coolant, no nothing coming out. And it's emptying, leaving the block again. And the last place I'm doing, this one's gonna probably be a mess, but I'm putting it through the heater hose inlet and letting it drain out. Oh. Okay, hold on. Take this clamp off. Just to, to try and get it to force through some of the heater at least. I know it's not going to do as much as I need it to, but it's better than nothing. And then, there, before I forget, I need to fill up and rinse this reservoir out. Okay, now reservoir is full. Just gonna put this back in place. Get the cap back on. And after I replace this hose, because this one's connected, see I have it right here. I'm gonna drop the engine bay, put this hose on, because it is a lot longer. It only needs to go right here. And just sitting on top, it's a lot longer. So I'll be back right now to clean all this up, change that hose. And then I'll add water, bleed the system, run it for 10 minutes, and add the blue devil. Alright you guys, so I know this isn't the cleanup setup still. It is sticking out pretty far. I probably could have brought it in a lot more. There's the other end with the clamps on it. If I didn't feel like trimming it, and then if I did move it in, it'd be about right there. And I wasn't too comfortable with shortening the bend that much, because it'd have to be about right here. It come out so I'd rather not let build pressure see how it runs and um, just because I will be driving the car on for probably a day or two before I do the half mount radiator install I'll probably figure out what I'm gonna cut it to then but now I'm going to be filling up the system and then bleeding it out letting it run for about 10-15 minutes so the fan turns on turning the heater on draining that out and then adding blue devil top hose is back on reservoir is connected again Oh, almost forgot. Need the temp sensor plugged back in. 
All right, so that's plugged back in. Nothing was disconnected down there, except for the heater inlet hose, and that's reconnected. So I'm gonna be filling it, and then letting it run for about 10 minutes, draining it, then adding the Blue Devil to flush it. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but all those little fuzzies or paper looking pieces or plastic or piece of rope or whatever it is, that's the reason I'm going to be doing the flush. My system actually wasn't that dirty, but you can see there is some old coolant. And I'm switching to an OEM version of this coolant. It's a peak uh, Honda Acura OEM for like, I think, early 2000s, late 90s. I'll show you guys the bottle later on once I'm doing the half size radiator. But I don't want to mix coolants and have something go wrong, have it turn to sludge. And because of little stuff like that in the system, I'd rather just flush it to be safe. Okay, yeah, so the car is nice and warm already. It's pretty hot. Thermostat's opened up. This hose is on. The fan keeps cycling off and on. And the way I'm going to be flushing the system out, because I do want these heater lines to be nice and clean. I want the radiator. I want the whole cooling system to be flushed out properly. And what I'm going to be doing is I got the hose right there. I'm going to be draining, draining it from down here again at this drain cock. And I'm going to find a way to safely open up this cap without burning myself and putting that hose right against here and letting it flush everything out, you know, running the system on and then possibly if I can find a way to actually feed the heater core since it's still nice and high, it will be cycling through the thermostat and everything still. A way to flush that water through, hopefully I can just get it through the top since you're going to go from the top down um, upper radiator hose, around, cycle through the head, heater core inlet, back around, you know, hit the throttle body, idle air control valve, everything, and back down to the inside, and then by that time it should be draining out. Now that the car is completely flush, um, you know, it's completely drained out, all the water and everything's done, I just got to put this drain cap back on, and then I'm going to proceed to fill the Blue Devil radiator fluid. I'm literally following the directions, except if I ran it with water a little bit longer. So I'm going to put this in, and then I'll start filling this up, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to fill it up with water. So now that it's filled up, just like the bottle says, you want to drain the system when it's cold, fill it up with water, run it for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, you let it cool down, drain the system out, and then you fill it up with Blue Devil radiator flush, run the car, and then top it off with water. So I'll be doing that right now. Let me just put you guys on a quick time lapse. For that. Alright you guys, and as you can see, pretty much the system has already warmed up. This thermostat's open, nice and hot, got the heater circulating and blowing up the hot air. The cap is now on, the reservoir's starting to fill back up from like this excessive water and everything like that. I got it filled up the minimum line, it's still filling up. So I'm going to let this run for about 15-20 minutes so the fans keep on. I'm going to turn it off, it's pretty late at night, and then tomorrow I'm going to go driving this thing around. I got a couple things to do. And over the next few days, drive it around until I hit at least three hours. I'm hoping for six though to just completely flush it. Then I'm going to come back to you guys on another uh, segment of this video where I will be redraining the system and putting the half-size radiator in itself. Alright? So I hope you guys enjoy.